I'm from Chicago. Cleveland. Phoenix. Milwaukee. Hartford. Colorado. Oklahoma. Thailand. Norway. Cameroon. And I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose Xavier University. For business. Chemical science. Occupational therapy. Philosophy, politics, and the public. Computer science. Because it felt like home. I knew I would be welcome. Because they take care of veterans. I felt connected to the campus. To the people. The sports. I came here to be a musketeer. And now. And now. I am. I am. I am. All for one. Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to EGFC Season 2, Week 11. I'm joined as always by the ever-fabulous looking Stan Greyheart Barker, and today we have some fantastic games coming up for you. We've got William & Mary versus St. John's University, Fairfield University versus Niagara University, and in the final game of the day, Marquette versus Xavier. Some absolutely fantastic games coming up, and the first game coming up, we've got William & Mary, who are on a bit of a hot streak at the moment. They are indeed, after uh, coming in from that big win last week that we got on stream. This is uh, my third third time joining you both the previous weeks. We've only had the two matches to view due to some technical issues. Hoping that we get the full allotment tonight certainly will be absolutely cracking. Yeah, it would be great to obviously get the, uh, the full three games. And if you are a Manhattan fan, your team have a bye tonight due to obviously the... Uh, the uh the differences of teams there's seven teams in the league so they can't all play in one week but either way Naturally. exactly but either way i'm pretty sure we are fairly close to the end of the game it will be france versus paris saint germain we've seen that one <laughs> many a time and i think stan's starting to get sick of it already but i however um uh, i don't mind it i think obviously it's, it's good to see neymar and mbappe play um obviously heavily in the meta at the moment so it is decent to see those players playing, but it would be nice to see some, you know, some different sides, maybe some Brazils and stuff like that. I actually really like this matchup because I think the thing that I really dislike is when you get the mirror matchup or even where you get one of these two teams against someone without Mbappe in it, essentially. Yeah. Uh, at least here you get to see, the, for me, I think it's actually the first time I get to cast the difference between these two teams. You've spoken about it at length, how you've got the excellent defense that comes through from playing as the France team. You've got some, you know, some nice counterplay with people like Ben Yedda. However, you'd go over to PSG and all of a sudden you've got Neymar on your team as a result. And so you've got that uh, excellent extra skill player up front i personally i've you know still uh, still slightly new to all of this but i personally have liked what i've seen from psg especially over the last few weeks i think it enables those players who know their skill moves well to really shine however this is actually a matchup um both between william and mary and saint john's and also between paris saint germain and france that i'm very much so looking forward to that's very true. It's very true indeed. Obviously, you know, I think the the, the majority of the skill gap this year is the uh, is the skills for sure, and it does show um, that obviously the players know what they're doing when you see them use skill moves that even I don't know how to do. Obviously, being a fantastic <laughs> FIFA player myself, um, definitely not. I I can very barely average around uh, gold two, gold one at a push. Uh, if I'm very lucky, but obviously this weekend, a football player that has 
um, in real life, performed yeah. very well. Is currently injured. Diogo Jota, number one in the world on PlayStation. So I would say the number one player in the world this week, which is absolutely incredible. Players of, that are really good in real life coming through and showing, you know, they can translate it onto the uh, the game version. Absolutely remarkable. It actually led to um, a report on the BBC website uh, talking about what's uh, what's better, being a pro gamer or being a pro football player. Very interesting, very interesting read. And that is a very interesting kit for PSG. I'm someone who likes to wear slightly flamboyant, uh, <laughs> somewhat garish colours on the football strips that I wear when I go and play five aside or with my friends when it's not a lockdown. Um, and I have to say, I'm a fan of what I'm seeing here. Yeah, I think they showed it off in one of their games the other day. Um, uh, I'm not too sure what game it was actually, but they did come out with a third kit on, and a lot of it. Uh, it went wild on social media. Loads of people were like, "What is this? It looks like something from another world." But uh, yeah, I really <laughs> rate some of the kits that have been coming through recently, the designs and stuff like that. It's very, very nice. As we uh, we should just about be ready to get underway with this action. William and Mary's from versus St John's University. Here we go bring you straight into the game and it says friendly on your screen but i assure you it'll be anything but friendly as we see these two universities going up against it here on the big east and um, we are underway game begins and already france have the ball plot twist yeah france have the ball very very early which is uh good to see but uh, PSG do win it back. Obviously, you've got a lot of players um, playing for Paris Saint-Germain that are playing for France. Well, one or two. You've got Mbappe giving the ball to Neymar Jr. Can he find it in the middle? Maybe just going to go for that near post shot. Great Ooh. tackle from Langley. Yeah, breaking up that early opportunity. Already seeing some of those skill moves that I was referring to during uh, during the pre-game. Now the opportunity to break down the opposite wing. It's going to be Martial, the Man United striker, of course, in the French national colours. In this game, feeds through Mbappe. The ball is beautifully saved. PSG once again breaking it. It's end-to-end -end at the beginning of this match. Very end-to-end -end indeed. And Mbappe going to come straight down the other end, looking for that LB fake shot to... Maybe use a little bit more of his pace, but Langley does well once again. Very good defending in the uh, in the early early moments of this game from St John's University. St John's University, uh, sorry, William and Mary. St John's University are in the PSG kit, the uh, the PSG third kit in the red um, the red indicator above the teams. Is going to be broken up yet again. Some strong defending, as you said, but they're having to do a lot of defending. And as you often see in these top games, the team that has to do the most defending is usually the team the most under threat. The question is, can they make these counter attacks play off? Yeah, it did throw me off guard a little bit. I expect when I when I see the uh, the red indicator, I always think the home team, but it's actually the the white the white indicator above the the heads, which is William and Mary. And William and Mary potentially going to get a chance. Oh. It's Gillian and Mbappe with the first shot of the game, and it's going to go drilling into that bottom left hand corner. There is the celebration, and there is the goal. William and Mary one nil up here. St. John's being made to rue their earlier um, errors as they got the ball consistently dispossessed from them in the final third. No such mistake comes through from William and Mary. France with the early lead over PSG. But now Neymar Jr. on the counter-attack yet again. It's going to be that mixture of Varane and Langley just, just dispossessing uh, mm. St. John's every time they step forward. What I will say is St. John's, uh, they're the top team in the league. Well, they, they were the top team in the league, um, and I'm pretty sure they're still one of the best teams in the league, um, top of the table at the moment. And it's very interesting to see William & Mary obviously coming into this second half of the season, the uh, the spring split with new players. And, well, something's, something's got to be changed in the water because they're playing absolutely ridiculous. Definitely true. Perhaps, uh, perhaps a new player, or perhaps just a, a revitalization through the water of the existing players. Neymar Jr. has been fed through. St. John's looking to try and equalize. Breaking free of Varane and Lenglet is fine. If you're going to send the ball into the waiting hands of Hugo Lloris, then there's really no danger for the WM defense. Yeah, what Lloris does well there. Obviously, a little bit too close to the goalkeeper. Obviously, oh. you've got to remember it's a new game as well. FIFA 21 rather than FIFA 20. Uh, the winter split was being played on on FIFA 20, so obviously brand new game, um, lots of new uh, lots of new tactics, lots of new skills. Um, the gameplay is completely different as well as Martial looks to come into the box, does a few step overs, exits. Kimpembe does very well though, and they get it away only as far as Bernat, but they should be fairly fairly easily to play out of the back from here. 
Yeah, the Man U connection there of Pogba Marshall was briefly working out quite nice as we see St. John straying off side. Let's see whether or not that's a connection that continues to play out really, out, pay out really nicely for William and Mary. They're certainly, for me, actually looking like the better side in this first half, not just on the score sheet. Yeah, William and Mary looking really decent. Um, we'll see if they can obviously get a second goal here as Kempembe does really well again and ushers. Mbappe out of the way so it can roll out for the goal kick but really really well played from uh, from the Frenchman there obviously he's not quite broke his way into the French national team yet because you've got Lenglet and Varane at centre back but he's very young so I would expect to see him uh, break in there at some point maybe in replace for Lenglet Marco Verratti finds Neymar Jr. Plays the ball back out to the Argentinian Angel Di Maria. Neymar Jr. released down the wing. Perhaps looking to cut inside. Instead looks for the shot. The deflection will not quite fall favourably for St. John's. And yet again, it's going to be William Mary on the counter-attack. Yeah, we'll see if they can make anything of this one. As uh, It's broken down a few times. But here we go. It's oh. Kylian Mbappe. Throw on goal. It's 1v1. The goalkeeper movement. The near post is completely wide open. And Kylian Mbappe will shoot. He will score. And that's going to be 2-0 now to William and Mary. Absolute scenes here as the lower seeded team are running away with the first half. Remember, this is the first half of a best of two games. So we've got four halves of football in total, which is just a confusing statement, frankly. Um, <laughs> but it is the early lead through the first half. Ooh, that's really cool. But this could be pulled back somewhat now. And it is going to be 2-1 of St. John's finally find the gap and Mbappe scores at the other end of the pitch. I'm not quite sure what to make of that one because uh, Lloris came out and he looked like he should have saved that. Um, yeah, I'm not too sure what to make of it. But obviously St. John's now I mean, reducing the At least the he gap. didn't pick his own centre-back. Very, very true. Very true. Alisson Becker, obviously. A few mistakes as of late um, in the Liverpool kit. Unfortunate. I, um, I, 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 will, I will say I felt your pain on that one because for me, there's no way the first goal from Leicester should have stood and would the second goal have really happened if that right happened. Ball. Meanwhile, a second goal has happened for St. John's. They have equalised. Suddenly, seven minutes after the second goal from William & Mary, St. John's have found two of their own. What an absolutely incredible pass. I, I wasn't sure who, who sent it, but I think it was Verratti and just straight in behind made it look absolutely easy. And William & Mary maybe just resting a little bit sitting back just going oh we got the 2-0 lead we can relax a bit now you can never relax against the league leaders they have shown time and time again why they are so good at fifa and look for a passing behind their griezmann couldn't quite make it let's see if uh st john's are gonna keep going from strength to strength here and maybe oh, get another one Neymar Jr. showing the skill. St. John's breaking through, looking to make it three, unable to do so. However, if the first half was all about William and Harry, William and Harry, <laughs> William and Mary, who I don't think is Harry, uh, then the last 15 minutes have been all about St. John's. William and Mary trying to change that one up, trying to regain the lead, going into half time. Mbappe holding the ball up, perhaps looking to cut inside. But again, great defensive work from Kim Pembe. Kimpembe's got Mbappe's number in uh, quite a few of these defensive situations. But whipped into the area. The diving header comes in, but just wide. We'll go out for another corner. We'll see if, uh, if they can make anything of this one now as Pogba looks to whip it into the area. Might just go short. Does choose to do so. Gives it to Mbappe. Could potentially whip it in. Chooses to hold it up. Nice little flip flap. Goes for the pot of gold and can't quite find anything at the end of it. It's another corner though. Yeah, nodded away at the last moment by St. John's defender, denying Mbappe from his third at this end of the pitch. The ball's going to get punched out once more. Martial looking to try and find something. He'll hold the ball up. He'll find himself. Hernandez in goes Griezmann trying to find the end of this ball, but it is going to be halftime. It's going to be two all. And what a game we've had to start things off here. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. What a absolutely fantastic game we have had so far between these two teams. It's been absolutely incredible stuff. End to end. Um, really good counter-attack in football and I will be really, really interested to see who will take this one home because, well, it's it's been neck and neck so far, hasn't it? Let's be honest. It, it really has. I mean, even looking at the stats there, it could not be much tighter. Even that first half was a game of two halves with the first half very, very much so going in favour of William & Mary as the French team find that 2-0 lead. That's been pulled back now, and it needs to be a strong mental game from the underdogs to make sure they don't slip 
at all further behind before the second leg even arrives. One thing I will say, um, I, I, I'm surprised we haven't seen a, a five at the back in this game, to be honest. Um, we've seen a lot of five at the back uh, tactics been pulled out uh, this weekend. It's been It's come straight back into the meta. Um, I'm not really too sure why. Obviously, a few tweaks, tweaks and uh, tweaks and changes have come uh, from EA and a lot of the players have decided that this is the new top formation other than the 4-2-3-1 um, obviously a lot of people dropping it and looking for the 5 at the back it obviously gives you a lot of defensive uh, safety with the 5 and then you've got the 2 wing backs that can push forward when you're in the attack so it does give you that, that little bit of versatility that 4-2-3-1 also brings Here's the breakthrough yet again. Mbappe trying to get on the ball under the ball from Griezmann, not able to do so on this one. I must say, I really do like the uh, the amount of small tweaks we get to this game coming from EA. It does feel like it's very much adapt to survive here, <laughs> and that uh, certainly brings a unique amount of versatility to the game where you get change the formations, even if it's always Paris Saint Germain and France. They're always playing in a different way. The ball breaks into the box. It's cleared yet again by Rafael Varane. Did so well in the early parts of the first half before conceding two goals. We do see Draxler fighting the ball through. Again, Varane makes the ball go straight out of play. Paul's going to come out here by the uh, by St. John's University. Potentially going to bring on some players. Yeah, I don't think you're bringing Keane on for Neymar or Mbappe. This is the one problem with Paris Saint-Germain um, as opposed to France. It's just there's no, not really any decent players on the bench. On the bench, you've got Icardi, but he just got no pace on his base, uh, base player. You know his base stats, so it's a little bit difficult. But talking about you know adaptability is something that I think is the one thing we do see change a lot from year to year with FIFA. That's why we see so many different pro players come through every year because the gameplay changes every year. It's, it's, it's a difficult world to be in if you're a pro player trying to make FIFA your your uh, your top game. But obviously it does really, really... It's really an interesting game to watch because, well, not every week, but every time they bring out a patch, there's different tactics that people will use and different little gameplay strategies. I, for one, have very much been enjoying what I've been seeing of it in the last few weeks. Verratti finds Mbappe back to Verratti, edge of the D. Mbappe tries to make forwards. Oh, forces the save. Low to the left, diving is Lloris. Beautiful flip-flap into the shot. Couldn't quite get the power on it, though. Whipped in, cleared away from Lengley, but should retain the ball here. St. John's should be able to pick it back up and look to pick the defence apart again. And they've done it! And it's Mbappe. He's poached the goal in the 60th minute. And that man, he scored so many goals for both sides. And that goal <laughs> came from well and truly nothing. I think he scored four of the five goals on display here. Two for each what team. The first 30 minutes. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Was dominated by William and Mary. But since then, in the last 13 minutes, they have barely had a sniff of the ball. And the last three goals, all in favour of St. John's, who take the lead in this tie. That was just such a good pass and passing with purpose. Every pass was it had so much pace on it, but every player knew exactly where the next one was going to be. Neymar giving the ball down the wing. Can he find Mbappe? He should be able to. Can he find the finish? Not this time. Hugo Lloris will get the ball himself. back. Yeah, nice, uh, nice play from Norris, but he might be called to action again. Mbappe just finds the side netting with that one. Should be hitting the target there, Mbappe. And as you can see, Mbappe with <laughs> nine shots across the game for both teams. Obviously, best. Well, I would probably say um, one of the best players in the world. Obviously, um, I feel like in the next two years he'll probably be known as the best player in the world. Obviously, we've got Ronaldo and Messi, who are probably will retire in the next two or three years. So uh, we shall see. But I, I definitely think he's going to be known as the best player in the world at some point. I think it's certainly going to start coming down to a conversation between him and Haaland, the way things are going at the moment, certainly as strikers go. Uh, meanwhile, in this game, there is no contest for the top player. The only question is, for which team has he been the best? Uh, as you can see by the stats there, for St. John's, the six shots, for William and Mary, just the three. And that also describes quite nicely how heavily dominant St. John's have been since conceding those early goals. As we hit the 70-minute mark, Mbappe comes forwards again, forcing another save out of Lloris with his seventh shot for St. John's of the game. I think William and Mary just need to hang on here. Don't concede any more goals because they played really well in the early knock-ins of this game. But now the floodgates are really open. It's been chance after chance for St. John's. And we shall see beautiful rainbow flick from Di Maria. Can he get the ball back? No. Potentially could have been a penalty there. There was a little bit of a, 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 a coming together between two of the players. But obviously the referee said there was enough in it. Straight down the other end, potentially a chance for William and Mary. 
This is going to be Mbappe at the other end, trying to get his fourth shot on target, trying to find his third goal for William and Mary. Twisting Beautiful. one way and the other. Finds Martial, but immediately that play broken up very, very nicely. Ball sent forward now. It's going to be Di Maria trying to burst for, uh, through, trying to get away from Lenglet. Able to do so, so far. Being harried out to the edge of the box. Pacing, passing it back inside. Finding Draxler, but dispossessed by Hernandez. And now this is an opportunity for William and Mary to break because St. John's have committed men forward. Really end-to-end -end football. Really, really end-to-end. -end. Martial breaking down the wing. Looking to try and get it into the area. He's going to probably try and take on Kimbembe here. But we've seen throughout this game how clinical, how uh, well. He's just been an absolute force in the defence for Paris Saint-Germain, Kimbembe for uh, for St. John's University. He's been absolutely insane. Ball played out by Kaylor Navas. Going to go out for William & Mary throwing as they look to potentially try and equalise before the full-time whistle. But I don't think it's the end of the world. If they can hold on by one goal, it will look good for them going into the second game. Mbappe finds a bit of space, but closed down again by that man, Kim Pembe. And of course, oh, our right. attention is always towards the players uh, rather than the actual football players. But Neymar Jr. is the one breaking forward, finding a fourth goal for St. John's. You said it was crucial for William and Mary to not concede. They have not been able to do that. They lose out on one in the 83rd minute of this game. Well, we spoke about adapting earlier in the game, and I think that's what St. John's have done so well in this one. They came out of the gates, William and Mary, firing firing everything they had they were just throwing everything at them and uh and st john's obviously have now know what they're going to go for they've adapted really well started retaining the possession slowing things down a little bit but um yeah either way this has been a really good game very competitive which is nice to see obviously last season or sorry last split we we didn't really see that competitive edge from william and mary ball played through langley intercepts we saw the competitive uh, side, we didn't really see too much competitiveness from William and Mary. They did struggle. They really did struggle, and it was obviously difficult to watch. But they've looked very good in this game. Mbappe trying to help his team pull one.
Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to EGFC Season 2. My name is George DNC, joined by Stan Greyheart Barker, and we are ready to kick off underway here with the second leg of William and Mary versus St. John's University. Currently 5-3 on aggregate to St. John's University, and we shall see if William and Mary can make a miracle comeback. One big change to talk about, we are going to see Barcelona versus France this time in comparison to our PSG France matchup last time. So let's see if Messi and co can do anything to uh, to stop these French Titans from picking up the win. Already good aggression coming in from this Barcelona team. They find their way into the box. The break will come. Yes, yeah, so, uh, good start to the game. Nice to see. Obviously, we shall see if William and Mary um, have what it takes to, to beat the, well, the, the league leaders. Um, here in this one. It'll be interesting to see, obviously, Blue Champs for uh, St. John's University. He's the player we do see a fair amount for them, and he's going to make his way into the box with Martial. Going to go for the curved shot. It's going to come out to Kings of Coman. Great clearance off the line from Jordi Alba, I think that was. Honestly, I really expect to see this French team score there, but denied they were. William Mary, the opportunity to break now, trying to find early goals like they did in the first match. They need them with this 5-3 deficit. They do indeed. They need to get a few goals, and it's going to be S. Billy. See if he can. I'm probably not. I'm probably butchering his name completely, but um, <laughs> either way, you know, they, they need to score a couple of goals to get back into this game. So we'll see if they can do that. Obviously, Barcelona, an interesting uh, talking point. Messi comes to the end of his year, but you've still got quite a few decent young players in there. You've got the likes of De Jong, and here's a chance for Kylian Mbappe. Gives it to Kings of Komen with a shot. Good save from Ander Stegen once again. Yeah, that's going to be a um, enough for Barcelona to come away with the ball. They're taking a huge amount of pressure. Keep losing the ball in their own half. The counterattacks keep calming. This French squad looking so, so strong in the early going. Can they find themselves yet another goal? Put a little bit more breathing distance between them and William and Mary. Look Ooh. at the aggression coming through from St. John's. They try to just lose all that way forward. And from 25 yards, an absolute belter of a goal. It's that man, Paul Pogba. I'm surprised he didn't come up with a dab, but unfortunately, the dab has been removed from FIFA 21. But uh, yeah, it has, it has. So that and the shush got removed. But either way, fantastic goal from Pogba. An absolute screamer, an absolute belter. And uh, three goals down now, William and Mary. Unfortunately for them, we'll see if they can do anything here in this game. It's going to be difficult, but it is Coutinho going for that curved finesse shot on the left foot rather than the right. A little bit of a difficult angle, but try to make it work. The dramatic clearance coming through there from the French centre-back. It has actually led to a nice counter-attack. It's going to be Kingsley Coman running through the Barca defence like a knife through butter, finding the back of the net, and suddenly it's 7-3 on aggregate. Oof, oof. This is now, uh, yeah, this is going to be a really difficult game for William & Mary, Blue Champs, obviously. Um, we've seen him play quite a few times before. Um, he was in the spring split, or sorry, the, the winter split, um, the first half of this season. He did struggle quite a few times against some of the bigger players, but so far in this game, obviously not having too much luck. We'll see if he can do anything, obviously, as we, we get deeper into this game. Still got a lot of time left, but he now needs to get four goals just to, uh, ju just to, to tie this one up. Yeah, just to force extra time, and that is a big, big ask for anyone, never mind playing against this St. John's team that have looked so dominant, not just today, but previously in this season. Barcelona are countering. They're trying to find themselves a goal. They want to break the clean sheet. Hugo Lloris standing tall, letting his defence do their work, and they're doing it absolutely fine. Luca Dean actually finding the clearance out near the corner flag. Yeah, the Everton man doing very, very well. Ball whips into the area, Sergio Biscuits. Obviously, another player coming towards the end of his career for Barcelona. Got quite a lot of, you know, players that are looking like they're, you know, starting to come towards the neck end of their career. Obviously, bringing in quite a few decent young players. De Jong looking for the long shot. Messi looking for the shot. Can't quite find anything. That wasn't Messi, sorry. I'm not sure who that was. Um, but, yeah, you know, they've brought quite a lot of young talent, which is nice to see. But that's the problem with Barcelona at the moment. They really do not have very much money, um, apparently. <laughs> 
Kante and Mende doing enough to uh, to bring the ball out for a corner, a corner which is cleared evidently by Hugo Lloris. The ball is won back, however, by Felipe Coutinho as he tries to take the ball inside, gets caught just as he pulls the trigger, but no free kick given. Still wins the header back, still finds Messi, who twists and turns his way into the box, is dispossessed, however, Pogba now the opportunity to lead to a break. Yeah, this is the problem. France on the break. They're so dangerous. They're so destructive. Mbappe on the ball goes for a rainbow flick. A little bit unnecessary, maybe, but he doesn't care. Fake shot goes around Jordi Alba. Looking to get the ball into the box, but we all know he's not going to whip it into the box. He's going to go for a bit of skills. Might do it this time. Fake shot. Good tackle in the end, but it is just currently the uh, the St. John eSports show. They are just running circles around William & Mary currently. It's, it's, it's a hard game for them, but we'll see if they can do anything coming forward on this break. No, they cannot. <laughs> Credit to William & Mary's uh, real defensive positioning on that one because at first it was taxi for Alba, but then he made the clearance. Now it's led to an attack which is broken up yet again by a block, not even bringing Hugo Lloris into action. Counter-attack coming through. Kingsley Coma running it down the right wing, finding Griezmann, went for the 1-2, broken up by that man, Jordi. I will say it's a little bit predictable um, there with Messi. Obviously, everybody knows Messi's left foot is, is the one that you want to get it onto. But there's nothing wrong for using it, getting it on the right foot and just having a punt at the near post. Um, I see it so many times, players with using Salah, Messi, just trying to force it onto the left foot so they can get a shot off. Just just use it on the right foot. Shoot at the near post. Honestly, a lot of players do like they they underrate it. They don't quite give it the props it deserves. There is a chance here whipped in. Great header, but just hits a side net and it will be a goal kick for William and Mary. Killian, the Zillion, and right now you can't stop the Killian. It is going to be the breakthrough coming. Griezmann, obviously, on both teams in this game. This time it's the one with the Barcelona shirt bringing the ball forward. Lengley managing to dispossess, but does so via a foul. I can't believe you just brought a League of Legends pun onto the FIFA show. I cannot yeah, believe really? you've done you can't, this. You can't believe it, really? <laughs> <laughs> the only uh -huh. chance it is going to go straight into the path of a France player, and now another chance to counter attack. Biscuits does well, but he gets dispossessed and. PK wins the ball back once again. One of the, the older players in the team, but one of the players who is uh, obviously very uh, reliable. Would love to see William and Mary pull one back on the stroke of half time, but yet again, the block is so, so good from St. John's, never allowing an inch for these strikers to find the target potential for the counters. Again, we see Alba sliding in, the ball's taken around him. Lengley now trying to do what he can to stop Coleman in his tracks. The only thing that stops Coleman is his woeful inaccuracy. <laughs> a little bit unlucky there obviously uh, ball on the bounce it just went over the bar a little bit difficult but the half time whistle being blown St John's University currently in the lead by four clear goals it is looking very very good for them certainly is 7-3 with just one half of football left to play I am wondering if there is any chance at all for William and Mary really to pull this one back. It doesn't feel great for them, but I do credit the fact they've put up a brave fight. Yeah, obviously you've got to give them props. It's a very difficult game for them. You know, top of the table, they came out fighting um, with the two goals in the early uh, the early stages of the first game. Then they got the penalty. They got another goal back, brought it down to just a one-goal deficit. But uh, ever since then, it's just looked it's impossible for them. Komen once again in the box and... Goes for a shot that isn't probably very likely to go in, but <laughs> goes for it nonetheless. Yeah, Kevin's had a few of those this game. Maybe one will nestle at the back of the net by the end of this match. I'm sure William and Mary will hope not. They'll be hoping they can find a goal on this counter-attack. But yet again, it's not to be the defence so, so solid from St. John's in this game, really. Using this French solid defence to an absolute T. But this is an opportunity to break through yet again. The clearance comes through. And Luca Dean, more known for his corners usually than his slide tackling, doing absolute work. Yeah, he's putting in a shift here in this game, isn't he? The French defence looking very, very good indeed. But obviously, you know, they've got such an insanely good defence. Mendy, Varane, Lenglet. There's just so many players in that defence. Here comes Kings of Komen coming forward. Can he find the shot? Looks for the fake shot and it will go out for a corner kick. Corner will immediately be delivered right into the box. Free header almost for Rafa Varane, who will be asking how he didn't do better. Yeah, that's one thing I will say about corners and, and heading in this FIFA. They aren't really the greatest. Um, it's one of those games where you, even if you're in a crossing position, you never really cross it in. You look to go for the skill run kind of thing. But chance for Messi here. Great touch, great shot. But the goalkeeper's done so well. That really should have been a goal for William and Mary. 
One of the first times Hugo Lloris has been called into action and was not found wanting. Leo finds his shot and blocked. Meanwhile, the pressure is being put down by William Ramirez. They try to find themselves something, some way back into this match, but it's just not happening. And the counter-attack comes through. Marshall just skips past Des with ease. This is going to be the, uh, the Man United player breaking onto the edge of the 24-yard box. He takes the ball all the way through, pulls the trigger, blocked at the very last second by the Barca defender. And it's actually enough to make it a goal kick yeah it was really uh really really close there probably should have scored um once again i, I feel like i'm the uh the near post police currently because i'm, I'm <laughs> shouting to players why didn't you go near post but seriously nobody uses the near post it's so frustrating goalkeepers are really really bad at the near post this year and it, 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 i find it difficult to, to watch when people don't use it but either way they're winning by so many i'm, I'm pretty sure they don't they don't really mind too much not scoring it they're just trying to score some fancy goals here's a chance for leo messi can he score a fancy goal of his own we'll take it on the right foot but deflection corner kick yeah the goat not quite uh managing to make it work on this occasion ball comes out on the edge of the box of Leng lane threads the ball through strike goes over the bar and that is pretty much time running out for william and mary to come back into this one still four goals down on aggregate 25 minutes on the clock yeah, not long to go at all. Not long to go at all now, and we shall see if there's another goal potentially in it for St. John's University. Mbappe is going to go out for a corner. It's, 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 it's hard to watch, obviously, because it was such a good start to the game and it was very end-to-end, -end, but now it's just kind of feeling like a bit of a, a one-sided one. Uh, but there is a chance for Pogba there. Cleared away, though, and Messi now. The one-man Messi team, um, I feel like <laughs> Barcelona are at this point. Oh, my I word. What a lovely, lovely strike. That one may be the one that ends this game as a contest. Mbappe, yet again, the 69th a minute, finds a nice goal and is going to make it now. Uh, eight, is that 8-3 on aggregate, I believe? Nice. Um, it's uh, it's certainly looking a bit too much to come back from as uh, PK fouls on the edge of the box, giving it over. I want to give credit to America because up until that moment, they had managed to, uh, to not concede in this half of football. They looked even likelier to score, potentially. Unfortunately, their defence is broken down there, as we saw by Mbappe yet again. I do feel still like William and Mary have improved a lot this season. Absolutely. Um, compared to the last um, the last split, which is obviously uh, really, really nice to see. But um, you, when you're coming up against the top team in the league, even if you do improve a lot, you know it's still nice to see the, the, the little wins, the little wins. Like taking the 2-0 lead, it's nice to see. Um, not conceding as many goals you conceded last game and this game. Obviously, we've still got 15 minutes to go, so they could <laughs> potentially. But, um, you know, it's the little victories you've got to take when you are looking to improve and when you're, you know, you're trying to bounce back. But chance maybe to score a goal here. Could have played the ball through. Not this time. Uh, yet again, it's going to be Griezmann running it down this end of the pitch, finding Messi, the header straight into Lloris' arms, and unsurprisingly, as go uh, goalkeepers tend to do in the modern era, he goes straight to the ground, but he might have to be back on his feet to deal with another attack. Uh, ball is going all over the place, an absolute pinball wizard moment. William and Mary unable to convert it into a goal, however. Yes, obviously William and Mary, you know, 3-0 down in this game currently, but they have had a few chances in this game. They're looking decent. It's just a uh, a few things they need to improve, but here comes Messi. Can they potentially get a goal? The header comes through, and it will go for a goal kick. It was a little bit unlucky. Bounced off the defender's header first, then couldn't quite meet the second header. But, you know, it's, I, th I think it's been a good showing for William and Mary. I'll, I'll be interested to see what they can do next week in the next game. It has indeed, but it's been yet another dominant performance from a team playing as France as they look to try and find their fourth goal of this game. Unable to do so just yet, but the ball is back at Komen's feet as he looks to find a strike, trying to redeem his earlier mis uh, misguided efforts. The ball now breaks to Griezmann. He is the wrong side of the fence. He's being tugged back, surely, but the ref says no. Griezmann tries to win it back, but the ball will go uh, safely out over to Langley on the left. Yeah, exactly. Uh, William and Mary obviously coming up against Xavier next week in uh, the clash of the two teams that needs, both need to improve this season. Both need to have a bit of a better split, but we shall see as Dion comes forward with the ball. Can't quite find the shot. Could have seen potentially a penalty. Griezmann gives it to Zembele, and there it is. William and Mary get themselves a goal. They get themselves a goal. They break the, uh, the clean sheet for St. John University. Although it's not going to mean too much in the result, it's the little victories. 
does no less than they deserve as well in this game to at least make sure they get the one goal and reduce that aggregate deficit somewhat. Absolutely feel it's deserved by them. I do believe St. John's easily deserve to come out victors in this game, but full credit to William & Mary for making it a contest. This has by no means been a complete battering. The chip! It's a cheeky one that's just about denied by Ando to stay again as the ball comes away, but is again dispossessed. It's going to be Kante, then the absolute machine finding Pogba, the slightly more temperamental machine. Well, there you have it. That should just about be the uh, the full time whistle coming in. Obviously, the one goal back for William and Mary. I'm sure they will be very happy with uh, at least getting one goal back. Um, but here we go. That is the full time whistle being blown, and St John's University will win by what's that? Eight goals to four. Um, what what was the final score in that particular one? Uh, it was five three in the first result. Five, five three in the first. So, so it's yeah, eight, you're eight, absolutely right. Yeah. Eight, eight, eight to four. Double the goals. Uh, I wouldn't say double the dominance. I do think that uh, William Mary had a really good showing on that one, but full credit. St. John's showing why they're so near to the top of the table. Great performance from them. Great performance indeed. Obviously, William and Mary, you know, they're looking to improve this season. And I think that is uh, definitely them showing that they can improve. And they have improved, obviously, coming up against the, uh, well, the top of the table team uh, in St. John's University. I think they've done very well. Um, in that regard but obviously we have many more games to come yet today so let's have a quick look at the schedule um, before we get into the next game's action we have got Fairfield University versus Niagara University so two very middle of the pack teams I think I'm right in saying two middle of the pack teams coming up against each other in this game Niagara well they were third in the table and uh, Fairfield were fourth in the table um, as of last week so we shall see how they get on um, in this game obviously fighting now for well potentially uh, a win uh, maybe to come first in this league yeah, that will be a good one to watch at the end of the day we'll get to see Marquette up against Xavier um, but for now I think we get ourselves just a short break to refresh am I right you are right indeed Stan so we'll catch you in a few minutes and we'll be back with Fairfield University versus Xavier uh, sorry not Xavier University Niagara University we'll be back in a moment
Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to EGFC Season 2. My name is George GNC, followed by my good friend Stan Greyheart Barker as we look to go into tonight's second game of the evening, Fairfield University versus Niagara University. It should be an absolutely fantastic game. Two middle of the pack teams going head to head in tonight's action. Um, and I'm pretty sure we are about ready to get underway with tonight's game. So, uh, yep. how are you feeling going into this one? Obviously, it's going to be Liverpool versus France this time. Oh, interesting. Uh, that's a, a new one to see matched up against this French team that, of course, we see so often. I'm feeling great. I'm looking forward to what is hopefully going to be a really close end-to-end -end game. Let's be honest, isn't that what everyone hopes for when they tune into a football match? And as a West Brom fan, it's not something I get to see very often. Drew 1-1 one -one with United last night, though, no? Now, to be fair, I, I'd argue we were unlucky uh, not to get all three points. And if our, uh, if our main striker could have found the back of the net again, then maybe that's what we would have done. But no, nope, it was not to be point is usually good against united but our team desperately need three wherever they can find them so i think we're pretty much doomed for a championship season next year uh, much as you're probably doomed for a uh, round about second or third place well handles of god has still got the commentary on like he did last week he clearly oh, does not handles! clearly clearly does not listen to my requests in the captain's meeting but either way we are the commentary team and great save from hugo Lloris in the early knock-ins of the game bobby firmino <laughs> almost almost with a, with a chance to score there yeah, certainly something that Firmino's used to in that absolute cracker of a heading against uh, Tottenham earlier in the season to win that leg that left Mourinho fuming. Now it's Martial <laughs> breaking down the right wing, cutting back inside, finding Ben Yedda, who we didn't see too much of in our last tie. I'm not entirely sure he was on the pitch. Pogba is going to play the ball inside, finding Ben Yedda once again. He turns this way, he turns that, he looks back to Kante, who plays the ball forward, is going to find Mbappe, but he's just offside in what was an extended period of play for Fairfax. Yeah, offside coming from an offside position, but either way, good little bit of pass and play, and it'll be interesting to see how uh, Fairfield get on in this one. Obviously, uh, Handles um, looking to obviously Handles is playing for Niagara, uh, so Fairfield are France, and then Niagara are Liverpool. But there's chance here for Handles can't quite find the shot. It is blocked away. Fabinho though steamrolling through the defence somehow finding a way to get across in. Not too sure how, and now looking for a counter attack and bit of play is Fairfield University. Yeah, apologies to Fairfield, who I'm sure will have been none too pleased to have been called Fairfax, but I'll uh, attempt not to make that <laughs> error uh, again. As we, uh, as we do see the, uh, the continued play, it's a little bit more cautious than the end to end play we saw in match one of the evening. Yeah, for sure, definitely. I, I think it's it's nice to see some a bit of slower football every so often. Gives us a bit of a chance to talk a bit more about the match and what's going on. It also gives the uh, the players a chance to maybe build something a little bit less sloppy. Obviously, with full throttle football, you know, going end to end to end, it does tend to get a bit sloppy. Some of the passes don't tend to get thought about too much. They just throw them in where they can. But here is a chance for Liverpool. Thiago finds Firmino, looks at the shot, it's going to be deflected wide for a corner. You know, I'm on a lot of the, the Liverpool fan pages on uh, Facebook and Twitter, and there's a header, it's going to be Joe Gomez who gets in there, and Fairfield University have taken the lead, they've taken the first goal, and it is one of the most unlikely sources, the Englishman Joe Gomez. <laughs> What a cracker from Jomez, and what a celebration to match. Well deserved, the cop goes wild. They do indeed, and um, I can't remember. Oh, yeah. So I'm on. I'm on quite a few of the Liverpool fan pages <laughs> and the Liverpool forums, and uh, I can't believe my eyes on some of the things that I see on there. A lot of people saying that Thiago is the problem with Liverpool. Probably got as soon as he come in, we start losing, and and they're saying all he brings is negative football, passing it back all the time, and I'm, and and talk of Klopp potentially getting the sack, and I'm just ah. Oh, Absolutely unbelievable. But here is a chance for Killian and Mbappe. Can't quite find the ball roll required to get in behind the defence. My, my dad's a massive Liverpool fan, so I have to have all these conversations on a pretty near daily basis. And I, I have my own thoughts on it, which we'll certainly discuss in a moment. But right now, we've got to pay our attention to the attack coming through. As Firmino is so strong here on the ball. Strong, I think I've ever seen him in real life. He loops the ball through. It's clawed out the air by Lloris. A second save was not even forced, however, as the follow-up header goes just narrowly wide. And by narrowly, I mean massively. That was a country mile wide. I'm not sure what one Eldon was doing. It was a, it was an open goal. All he had to do was just give it a bit of air, but completely fluffed it in the end. And <laughs> maybe now's your chance to tell me your, uh, your opinions then on, on, on the full season then. I mean, Klopp is clearly under a huge amount of pressure at the moment, both in terms of results and, and just in personal life as well. I think yeah. I saw that his, his mother had recently passed, which is obviously a horrendous thing. And maybe maybe he does need a bit of time to just go and reset, potentially. 
do I think that's the problem? No, if I'm honest, because, you know, as we see this fantastic strike coming through, we, we've seen, obviously, that even before that sad news was broken, that Liverpool have been in something of a slump. In fact, since their draw against West Brom, actually, it felt like that slump started. Mm. Um, for me, the biggest problem is that I think a lot of teams have worked out how to play against Liverpool. Um, I don't like Thiago as a, as a tackler at all. Like, I feel like he's going to get sent off in every match I watch him. But I don't have an issue with his passing. I think he has wonderful creativity, as we're seeing here from France as well. Ball breaks back to them here on the edge of the area. Looking for potential shot. Ben Yedda is going to be just hovering, waiting, looking to try and draw a foul potentially. Just waiting to pull the trigger, looking for the right opportunity. Will it come? And Mbappe, he finds himself an opening. It's going to be one all. Wow, fantastic bit of play from France. Fantastic bit of play from Niagara to find that goal. It was absolutely beautiful. It was absolutely wonderful stuff. The, just a pass and the little bit of uh, the stop and hold the ball, wait for the player to commit, the La Croqueta, pass to Mbappe, the turn, the shot. It was all just picture perfect um, in that situation. And absolutely wonderful stuff as they equalise up in this game. So we shall see if uh, how this game turns out. Obviously, both of these teams very, very evenly matched in terms of the uh, the, the, the table, the, the, the tournament table, and in terms of uh, both players and teams playing. So we shall see how this one turns out. But 1-1 is currently, you know, what I would say is about right 33 minutes into the game. Yeah. I agree. The two teams seem to have been playing different styles with uh, with Liverpool having come out and consistently every time they've got the ball tried to push forward, aggressive counter-attacking. But as you see, France, they've opted into a more of a, a slow build-up passing maneuver, trying to find the shot like that one, which almost found a second goal for Mbappe. Very, very close. Very, very almost a goal there from Kylian Mbappe. Obviously, he scores so often in the volley. Oh, that was absolutely ridiculous from Griezmann. A volley rather than a header. Wow. Yeah, he, he he kind of just put his foot up in the air and he didn't really put any power on it. He just tried to direct it into the into the back corner, but a little bit unfortunate. It was really nice to see either way. Um, nice bit of creativity and potentially now a chance for Handles of God to put his stamp on the game. Can't quite get the ball, but does want it back with Jorginho Wijnaldum. Thiago now just gets run down by Kimpembe. It does indeed, and the passing once again is smooth, fluid stuff from this French team. The 1-2 breaks open the opportunity for a shot, and the beautifully weighted chip over the head of Alisson is enough to see France take a 2-1 lead. Wow. <laughs> what a goal from Ben Yedda. What a finish, I think, is the main thing. It was uh, the correct decision-making, though, I will say, from uh, from Handles with the... Uh, I can't remember what it was. It was uh, Allison coming out to try and squish the ball down, but he then realised, obviously, he's not going to go for a shot early, so he has to kind of scramble back. Quick check. Is it Fairfield that are 2-1 up or Niagara? Because I thought it was Fairfield. Uh, no, it's Niagara because uh, uh, hand. Uh, yes, yes. Sorry, it is Fairfield. You are right. These players, these teams are playing the wrong way round. How frustrating! <laughs> I, I may be wrong there, so please. Uh, please no, you are right. If I've led you uh, up the garden path on that one uh, again, the attack comes through France. Find the ball on the edge of the box. It's been so good with their passing so far. Yet again, Marshall finding himself an opening, trying to work a way to shoot is going to be. Um, I can't see actually right now. Um, but there we go. We're going to see half time. The half time whistle blown, and it is a tight affair. It's 2 1 right now. I do apologize on that. Um, the, the thing is, the, the teams are obviously uh, set up to to play Niagara away, Fairfield University at home. But um, but they've obviously they've they've gone and, and scrapped that and Niagara are playing at home. Obviously we're playing at Anfield, um, so it will be France that are away and Niagara that are home. So um, it should I, be. I don't think anyone's going to complain at you at all, there, George. I certainly will not be. <laughs> so it's two one currently to Fairfield University. Just so coming coming back coming back to Liverpool because um you know it's an interesting conversation and for yourself as a Liverpool fan I'd be interested to hear another voice on it. I I personally feel like. Liverpool lack a plan B, both in terms of their backup players yeah. and also their play style. Um, sure. How do you feel? Uh, 100% agree. Obviously, um, we've got a lot of players out injured currently. Uh, Diogo Jota is a main part of that. We brought him in, obviously, in the summer. And uh, he obviously has gone out injured, which is a little bit unfortunate because he was on such a hot streak. He was scoring the majority of our goals. Maybe another chance here for Fairfield University to 
get shot on goal, it's Mbappe stepping and stepping and can't quite find the shot. Virgil van Dijk does well. But yeah, I, I feel like the thing that we always have a lot of problems with is signing big players. Not big sub players, just big players in general that are willing to sit on the bench if they have to because we just lack the uh, the depth in the squad. And a chance here, can't, finds a shot, but Mendy blocks it away. So I feel like what Liverpool need to do, I, I heard Jamie Carragher talking about it the other day, Liverpool need to go out and they need to sign uh, some good players, not players that would sit on the bench, players that can make the start and eleven competition, people that can come in for Mane, Salah, um, Roberto Firmino, and and just give them a break because they're just playing week on week on week on week, and they're not getting a break at all. They're not, but this is a break for Fairfax. They look for their third goal, and they find it. Griezmann with another dainty chip. That was absolutely beautiful, to be fair. The uh, the bridge touch, Griezmann, obviously, with the finish. Really nice stuff. Fairfield 3-1 up now against Niagara. As, uh, you know, it, it's difficult for Niagara. They're obviously struggling here, but they have had quite a few number of chances. Larissa has been doing really well in net to keep him out, but Fairfield are defending really well, I've got to say. Uh, going back to Liverpool, I, I completely agree with that, with some of the points there. And it felt like last season was the time to pull the trigger on a couple of big transfers. You could have had maybe a, a Haaland or someone like that coming in. And, you know, you, you're on the back of a Champions League win, a, your first Premier League title. And actually, that, that was your moment. Instead, who do you pick up? You know, players like Minamino. Yes, Jota's been decent, but is he really that you know S-plus tier sort of player that Liverpool could have signed? Probably not. And then, of course, that game against Everton. Thiago, yes, he goes off injured, but more crucially, you lose Van Dijk, basically, for the season. Mm. And he is clearly um, being noticeable by his absence. Meanwhile, yet again, beautiful turns from Griezmann, looking for yet another goal. He's working absolute magic in the area. I think the problem is, and it's something that a lot of the Liverpool fans wanted to see, is um, Timo Werner come in. A lot of people wanted to see Timo come in, but obviously we didn't have the funds to do it. Now, that is a that is a question that I would ask the owners if I could. Is that true that we do not have the funds? Because obviously sounds, you um, see not so much. The, the Red Sox, they signed, a, what was it? I think it was a, a one billion uh, some some ridiculous a uh, hundred million pound contract with one of their baseballers um, over the course of like uh, five years some ridiculous um, and it's like well if you can afford to do give just give that as a contract why can't you afford to put that into Liverpool Football Club you know obviously baseball is an American sport it's something that oh, it's the that sure. F FSG put a lot of their money into but at the same time I do ask if they are putting the same amount of money or the amount of money we're getting in back into Liverpool uh, so that's a big a big frustration of obviously a lot of fans we want to see these bigger players come in there's a chance here from Mbappe stop like Croquetta beautiful that is going to be 4-1 now to Fairfield University and they are looking absolutely fantastic in this game dominant performance ever since that early goal from Niagara Fairfield have come out swinging to borrow the MLB statement and right now handles of God needs to find something otherwise it's going to be the handover at the halftime period being with a three goal deficit Niagara definitely don't want that against their near rivals it's karma it's karma for him not turning off the in-game commentary but, <laughs> <laughs> but seriously obviously full one down going into the second leg it's going to be very very difficult sure is um oh that was a Big, uh, somewhat clumsy looking header, but it's not going to be a foul that is blown. Instead, Kante finding the dispossession, much as he did so often in that title winning season with Leicester and Mbappe now breaking forward, as we know and love this player for forcing the save out of Allison. And frankly, I would say uh, Niagara very lucky not to be 5 1 down there. Perhaps they will be after this corner. Yeah, we'll see if I can get another goal here. Ball whipped into the area, and there's the header. And that is going to be 5-1 now. It's Paul Pogba at the near post. And, oh my word, this is an absolute statement from Fairfield. Obviously, these two teams very, very close in terms of the table. But currently in this game, very, very far apart in terms of skill. It's uh, it's fair to say. Uh, Fairfax, look, uh, Fairfield. Fairfield, <laughs> I, I, I used to... <laughs> 
I used to know someone who lived in Fairfax. It's the first thing that keeps coming to mind every time I look up at Fair on the top of the screen. But yes, Fairfield, of course, my apologies uh, to all involved there. Uh, playing excellently in this game. They certainly look like they're going to have a comfortable aggregate lead going into the second leg of this match. It's hard to get out of your head. Um, my friend had a Dungeons & Dragons character and uh, it, it's, his name was Kincaid. And all I could think of was Darian Kincaid from the movie The Bodyguard. And I kept on <laughs> saying it. And he was like, nope, I'm not doing it anymore. I'm and he deleted the character. And I felt so wow. bad because he was so happy with this character and I just completely ruined it for him. But so, I, know, <laughs> I, I know the feeling. Sometimes you just can't get it out of your head no matter what you do. And you keep saying it. And yeah, it is, it's a difficult one. But Fairfield currently winning 5-1 against Niagara University, playing really well. But here is potential chance for Niagara to get one goal back. If Sadio Mane can't get the shot off, we'll give it to Roberto Firmino. And that is a case of...
Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to EGFC Season 2. My name is George Overton, George GNC Overton, and I'm joined by Stan Greyhart Barker as we had an absolutely hellacious game between Fairfield University and Niagara University. 7-1 to Fairfield. Yeah, hellacious from Fairfield Health for Niagara. Definitely not the, uh, the aggregate score they'd want to see coming into this second leg, which we're going to get to see in just a moment. Earlier on tonight, we had St. John's beating down William and Mary to end off our stream. We'll have Marquette going up against Xavier. But right now, we'll turn our attention towards the second game as Niagara desperately try to climb back after a big fall. Yeah, there it is. Obviously, we've got another game coming up after this one. We've got another series coming up after this one. And then we will be finished for the night. But we have three <laughs> more games to show you guys before we head in. So, without further ado, I think we're just about ready to get underway with this Fairfield versus Niagara one. The players obviously just getting into game. I'm not sh too sure what two teams we're going to have. But I think it's going to be Liverpool on one side. I'm not sure about the other side. Um, but I am very excited. Obviously, I don't mind Liverpool on FIFA. I think they are a good team to pick. Obviously, you've got the pace in the defence. You've got the pace in the attack. You've got some decent players in the midfield to kind of set up that attack. But um, I think the one thing you are missing is those meta players. You know, a five-star skiller, a five-star weak foot player that you get from Neymar and Mbappe. Yeah, and just the sheer pace as well that we saw uh, from Mbappe. And somewhat surprisingly from Griezmann as well, who I don't think should be outpacing uh, someone like Amani, but he certainly looked like he could in that game. It's going to be Liverpool versus Manchester City. Try not to get too triggered, my friend. Uh, I'm not triggered. I'm kind of confused. Uh, I'll be honest. Man City's a weird team to pick. Um, they haven't really got a great defence. That's for a start. Uh, the wing backs are all right, but the two centre defensive, uh, the two centre mids, uh, centre backs are pants. Uh, the the, so, centre, the midfield they, do aren't. Do they generally run Laporte and Diaz, or is it Stones? Laporte or? and Diaz, probably Laporte and Stones. Um, but I would run Laporte and Diaz because Diaz has a bit more pace um, than Stones. I think the midfield ain't too great either. Um, to be honest, you know you got Gundogan, but he's really really slow. Um, and he's not used Let's be often. honest, he's a lot better in real life right now than he oh, probably is on FIFA. For sure, for sure. Did you put him in he's your like, did you put him in your thing? Your, your, your... In my fantasy team, I yeah. did, and I, I made the decision to captain him at the last second as well for this week. So Good his idea. performance uh, earlier on in the week has netted me a rather lot of points and put me in with a chance of winning some money in my fantasy football leagues, which makes me a happy stan. Um, <laughs> however, I, he does look like he's yellow flagged and potentially not going to play in the second game of this double game week. So... Um, might lose out on a few there if he if he doesn't play against Everton, but frankly, the damage already done for my rivals after an incredible Gundo performance. I got on the Gundo wagon nice and early, and the Gundo wagon is starting, but it's actually Mara's bringing the ball through, trying to find the early strike, unable to do so, as we see this battle between our, our current Premier League champions and most likely our up-and-coming ones. Yeah, true. Obviously, Man City had a bit of a down year last year, um, but bounced back straight away. The players had a bit of a rest. They had a bit of a break. They obviously brought in some new players as well, the likes of Ruben Diaz, um, Fernando Torres. I, I, I'm not. Is, is it Fernando Torres' his name? I'm pretty sure it's Fernando uh, Torres. Ferran Fer 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 Torres. Ferran Torres. I'm not sure. I, I wanted to say Fernando, but I was like, that's that's Liverpool's old striker. Fernando Torres. Have you seen Fernando Torres lately? The guy's like absolutely He's jacked. jacked now. He like, looks like the Incredible Hulk. It's amazing. He looks like the guy that you go into a gym and he tries to sell you gym membership. <laughs> he is that guy I, but i definitely think he's been missing leg day unfortunately which is a bit of a bit of a yikes for a footballer um still we're gonna see liverpool break forward the ball has been entirely in their half so far so an opportunity to finally counter-attack as liverpool do so well salah finding alexander arnold down the right hand side looking for Firmino, who's making a break inside instead it's going to be salah who has the ball played towards him it's going to be silver of all people breaking that one up finding Foden, playing the ball back down to raheem sterling sergio aguero notable by his absence in the Premier League recently trying to play the ball inside but unable to find Cancelo I think that's the one thing about Liverpool again that is quite hard to play with them on FIFA um, the one thing Liverpool rely on quite a lot is obviously the wing backs coming forward chance here for mm. Foden can he get the shot off one of the best youngsters in the world currently can he make his stamp on this game no Robertson has done enough but can he win the ball back lovely little flick through the nuts of Robertson but cannot quite <laughs> find the, the required chance, the required shot as Liverpool look to break down the other end? No. <laughs> uh, Phil Foden, or as FPL Dave calls him, Phil Foden. 
not quite able to find the goal as much as he has been in real life lately. I definitely uh, was not regretting my decision to go Gundogan, Gundogan instead of Foden recently, but uh, he certainly feels like he could pop off at any moment if he survives the wheel of Pep and that, uh, that roulette that is the squad selection for Man City. Well, that's why Man City is so strong. It's because they have the depth. Exactly. They have such a great amount of depth um, in the midfield. Obviously, you've got De Bruyne, you've got Gundogan, you've got so many decent players, you've got Foden. There are just, they're, they're, they have heaps and heaps of amounts of players, which makes it so easy for them. And they're all high quality, very, very talented players. You know, you've got Gabriel Jesus. He's sitting on the bench or he's playing. You've got Mares, you've got Sterling. There's so many. It's absolutely crazy how many good Ooh. players and what a position for a free kicker. KDB has the option, but it's going to be the little chip into the volley, blasted into the wall. Nice sneaky plays coming out of Man City there as they try to break down this Liverpool defence so far without any great success, but they've certainly had the majority of the play. Yeah, definitely. They have had a decent amount of play here as they come into the box, Man City. A little bit of a skill run from Foden once again. And uh, yeah, like I said, that's the one thing Liverpool need is they do need that 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 squad depth, which they really don't have at the moment. To be honest, you know, we're relying on youngsters yeah. coming in to, uh, to to rotate for the squad, and that just isn't healthy. Yet again, the breakthrough. Aguero finding KDB. Blast the ball straight into the hands of Alisson. I do really like the way that uh, Pep Guardiola rotates, but I think that you've seen in the last two years the difference between a well-rotated team. Yeah, it's going to be a penalty. I believe that's Gomez giving that one away. Scored in the first game, gives away a penalty in the second. And it's going to be a, a penalty probably to be taken by KDB. Yep, there he is. Oh, Man City struggling with their penalty takers in real life. KDB obviously a bit uh, missing with injury. He always scores his penalties as he does there. Yeah, exactly. And that was a it was a nice penalty. It was a nice bit of build up play, and it's just showing that Fairfield really are um, a complete team now. They they know what they're doing. They understand what they're doing, and it'll be interesting to see if they can challenge um, St Paul's. Uh, sorry, not St Paul's. St John's. John's yeah. St John's at the top of the table um, as they obviously look to uh, go deeper into this competition and. So far, they are looking good though in this game. Niagara, obviously, um, top of the close to top of the table, middle of the pack, really, um, in this tournament as well. So they're they're firmly um, they're firmly cementing themselves as the the above average middle of the pack team. <laughs> Very true. Uh, yeah, just to to go back to the the conversation because I, I frankly I'm really enjoying this one, uh, but I'll have to pause it for a moment because Liverpool breaking through. Firmino finding himself acres of space on the right, but he cuts instead side straight into Nathan Ake's path. And it's actually Ake at centre-back, and he does good work there. Aguero finding De Bruyne. There's so much space out on the right-hand side. Riyad Mahrez, another former Premier League winner with Leicester. Blast the ball just wide of uh, Alisson's right-hand post. That's another thing that I was going to say, but I didn't say. Um, that's the one thing Liverpool do suffer with is on FIFA. Um, obviously, Liverpool in real life, they attack with the wing-backs coming forward. Mm. And if you do that on FIFA, oh, you're going to get so many so goals. Yeah, yeah, so many holes yeah. in the back, so much room for players to come through. And as you can see, another another overlap for Mares hits the oh, bar. Crossbar. But you know that's just going to happen again and again and again. As uh, how has that not gone Kept out? <laughs> well, that's magical that that stayed in, but it does eventually go out. It's for a throw in in the end. One that Raheem Sterling of all people will take. Plays it inside. Aguero looking to cut inside now finds himself a corner. Yeah, Robertson definitely missing in action on those last couple of plays on the left from this Man City attack. They're coming through. Through again trying to come down the uh, their left hand side this time almost an own goal as the clearance comes through at the last second yeah well played and it's going to be another corner though for fairfield whipped in cleared away it's all fairfield Phoenix. at the minute oh it is it is the most one-sided game i think we've seen in terms of possession and in terms mm -hmm. of uh attacks i'll be honest it's just so difficult. only led to one goal is somewhat shocking, actually. Oh, it is. Oh, it is. There, there should have been more than one. Obviously, Mara's hitting the bar. Mara's having a few chances. Foden now on the ball. Can he get in? No, he cannot. <laughs> we'll go for a goal kick in the end. A couple of minutes until half time. But uh, yeah, just to. We, we keep getting interrupted by some exciting plays, and that's great because that's obviously what we're most interested in. But, oh, yeah. uh, and in fact, here comes another one. Riyad Mahrez breaking down the right hand side. He's got company in the inside. Chips it beautifully onto Aguero, who buries the ball into the back of the net. Fairfield 2 0. 
Whew, it's going to be a double digits aggregate game, I think, for Fairfield. Obviously, 2 0 up. They only need one more to make it double digits. And uh, Niagara still sitting on that one goal um, in the aggregate score line. Obviously, got the penalty in the first. Oh, sorry, the header from Joe Gomez in the first game. And there is a chance, another chance for Raheem Sterling. Gives it to Aguero. Oh, great oh. hand from. Uh... Oh, he almost got a second bite at the cherry as well. But no, the ball goes out of play. It is, I believe, going to be half time. An enthralling first half dominated by Fairfield. Yes, indeed. And the possession stats showed that. 35% for Liverpool and uh, yeah, zero shots. So they're gonna switch to they're gonna switch up the formation, I think. Um, just a little bit, go to two CDMs. Don't know if that's gonna help too much. I would probably go just go for the four two four to be honest at this point. Uh, just send everybody forward, get everybody on. Obviously, as you can see, Liverpool really don't have that much squad depth. That is their main mm -hmm. team, and then they have yeah just a bunch of subs you know take players that probably would get on the benches of every team in the premier league right. niagara uh, they, they they opt into the four two three one mm. i mean you say the benches of, of uh, other teams i mean you look at someone like minamino who's gone and instantly having an impact over at southampton and i think they're certainly classing these players but the fact they don't get the play time really hurts them you look at someone like a shakiri or a, a minamino who do so well at other teams yes slightly Lower, lower rated teams as we see he had another great break from the volley comes in saved by Allison cool. at his near post um, but you know at least they, they get play time and this is why I love Guardiola's rotation the thing is and you saw it last year if you have a really good set of players and they stay fit and they don't have the injuries like you've had to Van Dyke and the like this year Mm. then actually, yeah, that, that's the sort of team that can actually win a championship. But the second those players are gone and the stand-ins aren't at the quality or haven't got the match experience, that's where you suffer. And that's where Guardiola comes out top with his rotation. Foden finding rotations of his own, jinxing one way, and that does eventually get tackled by Alexander Arnold, his uh, compatriot in um, the um, England under-21 for many years, now in the main squad. Ball breaks to Sterling, who finds Walker on the edge, looks for the shot, but the England right back unable to find the target that's one thing a lot of people are talking about is the uh what england uh, what england Oof. midfield do you take that is a very very uh difficult question at the moment um in terms of you know the young younger players um i think it was madison foden and Grealish. i think were the, the the like of the younger ones we're not talking you, you know your henderson and uh, and as such but in terms of the younger, the younger yeah. lads, obviously, I think those are the ones that you go for. I think definitely Foden needs to have a shout for England. I think Madison and Grealish need to be playing for England at this point because um, they are still, you know, they're still younger um, and they still have a, a lot of a long way to go in their career. They've still got that longevity. Oh, something else. Longevity is the consistent attacks and the finishing from Aguero on the end of it. Fairfield have gone into double figures. They are 10-1 up on aggregate. Absolute dominance. <sighs> I think it's time to call this one. <laughs> I think this one. I think this one might be over. I think uh, it's a situation of uh, why are you still punching the man? He's already dead. Um, very much. <laughs> I love that. I love that old Simpsons moment. It was the it was the classic. He's already dead. And unfortunately, that that's probably true for Niagara unless they can make something truly uh, remarkable happen here. Um, but you know that doesn't mean we're not going to get excited as uh, as the goals go in, whichever end of the pitch they may be at. Though I would love to see Niagara find one back. Yeah, it'd be nice to see. There is a chip ball into the, the box over so Foden, and well, Sheesh. the players just do not miss from there. Players don't miss those volleys. Um, it's just, it, it's just too easy for for the, you for the players in this FIFA. You predicted this, George. You said there could easily be a double-digit aggregate win, and at the moment, that's what we are looking at. Eleven to one. That is a big old lead, and it doesn't look like uh, the mass of aggression coming through from Fairfield shows any signs of abating right now. Foden trying to find the ball on the edge of the box, not going to happen. Chance for Mino to break now. Ake okay, tries to close him down, but runs straight past the ball. It does get broken down just right at the last moment. As again, Silver in a more defensive position than you'd expect finds the ball. Rodri plays the ball out to Sterling. Can to keep the ball under control yes he can as he looks to turn inside it looked a little bit like the player was caught there exactly what happened but um i will say in week eight fairfield are actually uh fairfield were actually above or sorry below niagara in the uh in the in the standings of the table and that should be a foul coming through referee says no but i'm pretty <laughs> sure there was no contact to the ball <laughs> whatsoever 
maybe a chance to pass down the wing here. Just rushes it a little bit. It will be blocked. But now the run is going to be made by Alexander-Arnold versus Silva. Should have the pace advantage here. But Silva keeping up with him does well and so actually good. wins the ball back. Yeah, Silva has played an astounding game. Somewhat slightly had a position, I would argue. Alexander-Arnold feeds the ball through, tries to find the head of Firmino, is unable to do so, and yet again, counter-attack for the side in blue. It's going to be Aguero feeding the ball, uh, sorry, chasing after the ball, fed through for him yet again by KDB. Yeah, it's, it's difficult. It's really difficult for Niagara. I, I don't really know what's happened, whether they've just, you know, they've come on to FIFA 21 and they're kind of just... They don't, they don't really like the game. They're not very good at the game. I'm not sure. But uh, Fairfield, who were below them in the standings at the Week 8 standpoint, and I'm pretty sure, but looking at the, the results recently, are still behind them in the standings. Fairfield are just destroying them, dismantling. Yeah, this is um, this is this seems very much to be sort of men against boys in this game. And at the moment, Niagara struggling to to keep a fifth goal out in this second leg. Uh, yet again, De Bruyne with the fancy feet, finds himself so much space to shoot, eventually pulls the trigger just as the defender comes across to block. Again, the opportunity for Wijnaldum and the rest of Liverpool to break. Maybe they can find a goal here in the last 10 minutes of this matchup. This looks like a, in ultimate team terms, weekend league, this looks like a elite, two maybe one player playing against a a gold three player I'll, I'll be honest it is it is really big gap um in terms of skill in my opinion in 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 this game so far you know it, out of the 30 games you get to get elite two or elite one you need 25 uh, 24 or sorry 25 or 27 wins and to get gold three you need <laughs> 14 wins in total there is a massive well you know there is a big golfing class and i don't want to be rude i don't want to keep saying it but that is that is just the the the, the, the fact in this game there has been a massive golfing class I see it in Twitch chat and I see it on the pitch as well. Fairfield have come to send a message. That message is they are absolutely here to play. They are looking to close in on the top spots in this league. And with performances like this one, there's no doubt in my mind that they may well have the ability to. Yeah, I agree. I agree for certain. They are looking really good. And, well, it would be interesting to see. There is another chance. It's going to be Aguero. He's going to go for the Ooh. chip. And it's going to go straight onto the roof of the netting. But that should be the full-time whistle. That is going to be 4-0 to Fairfield. And that will be 11-1 on aggregate. That is your lot. It was um, it was a one-sided affair at the end of the day. Uh, which, you know, not exactly what we want to see. But uh, commiserations to Niagara. Congratulations to Fairfield. A real showing of dominance here even using this man city squad one that isn't something that we maybe see quite so often in these fifa games yeah we don't see it very often um but he's performed well with it here maybe not as well as he did in the first game but he's definitely performed well nonetheless and that will be a you know a considerable 11-1 win for fairfield university which is very nice but obviously we've got one more game to come up tonight it's going to be marquette university versus xavier university it's two of the teams that are you know, they're doing decently in the league, both of these teams. Marquette, um, top of the, well, second in the table as of week eight. And uh, Xavier University currently sitting on three wins, four losses. And Marquette sitting on six wins and two losses. So, obviously a big gap. But coming into the new FIFA, can they potentially pick themselves up some sort of result? Well, we, I think we are going to take ourselves a short break. When we come back, we'll find out whether or not Marquette continued their run of dominance. Or maybe XCOM give it to them.
I'm from Chicago, Cleveland, Phoenix, Milwaukee, Hartford, Colorado, Oklahoma, Thailand, Norway, Cameroon. And I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose Xavier University. For business, chemical science. here we don't just get up for another day we rise we don't just work we endeavor we're women and men for and with others we have hope we believe and we celebrate why are we different so we can be the difference Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to EGFC Season 2. We are here for the Marquette versus Xavier University game. My name is George GNC Overton, joined by Stan Greyheart Barker. They have a fantastic lushing, uh, luscious looking hair over there. This side, that side, that side. Wow, look at him. Look at him in all his glory. <laughs> but here we go. We're ready for the Marquette University versus Xavier University game. It should be absolutely fantastic. It's one of the top of the league sides going against one of the bottom of the league sides. But it is a new game. These two teams have not faced each other since the new game has has come out so we shall see if anything has changed if there are any changes in the players and uh, yeah i'm quite excited for this one actually we had a top against bottom sort of matchup in william and mary versus saint john's yes it did eventually go in favor of saint john's university but the underdogs william and mary absolutely made a fight of it taking an early 2-0 lead even even though they were to slip behind eventually in our last match fairfield absolutely obliterated niagara and now marquette against xavier that's the way we're going to round out the night and i hope they're good games yeah i'm excited for it it is going to be a pretty decent game we've got some interesting teams coming out as well it's going to be france versus Bayern Munich. Obviously, France, we do see them quite a lot. Mbappe, Griezmann, Ben Yedda, Kante, Pogba, Lenglet, Varane, Mendy, such insane players on the game. And then we've got Bayern coming in this time. Lewandowski, a bit of a change in pace, maybe. Maybe going to put the ball into the box more. Uh, maybe going to look to get it on Lewandowski's head. But you have got so many options with Bayern. You've got that aerial threat with Lewandowski. You've got the pace threat with the likes of Leroy Sané and Kingsley Coman. And you've got the solid defence as well. There is a lot of defensive players that are very good at Bayern. You've got the likes of Kimmich. You've got uh, Boateng. And you've got, obviously, the two left back. The left back and right back. You've got Davies, who is an absolutely insane prospect for the future by the way yeah alphonse absolutely terrific player uh, just to help out my very easily confused mind am i right in saying marquette will be france and uh, xavier will be bayern correct yes that is true fabulous good stuff that uh, gives me a little more clarity coming into the game i'm <laughs> sure i'll forget at some point and it will go horrifically wrong uh, hoping it doesn't go horrifically wrong for either of these two teams though we want to see it nice closely contested see if uh, xavier can pull out some kind of upset here and uh it's obviously exactly what they're going to be looking to do. Yeah, exactly. But Marquette coming into this one, obviously the fan favourite, or sorry, the bookies' favourite, I think it's safe to say. <laughs> and Xavier probably going to be the underdog's favourite. You know, they've got everybody cheering them on, you know, Come on, Xavier, see if you can get a result. <laughs> but we should be ready to get into this game. We're going to be at the Paris Saint-Germain's home ground, France's home ground versus FC Bayern München. And we'll see how they get on in this one. And already I am seeing there is a bit of a uh, latency issue between these two players. But obviously uh, that is something that the two players will have to put up with. And I have seen that we are uh, having the problem that we had last week with the, the widescreen TV where... Uh, <laughs> The, 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 the nice score line the doesn't, yeah it doesn't quite line up but we'll see if we can sort that out at some point <laughs> I've got you covered while you uh, do a little bit of production values as you're doing a great job there, George. Uh, we do see already the French team on the attack looking to find the early goal, unable to thread it past that back line of Bayern Munich that you're talking about. Uh, a back line that I'm well used to seeing playing against me because when, uh, when we do football manager drafts, one of my friends always drafts at least three of these Bayern Munich uh, back players up again. 
excuse me, up against me. Um, we're just going to see a, a nice free kick coming in, uh, courtesy of an offside play. France looking to break forward, trying to find themselves the early goal. Ben Yelly dispossessed by Boateng just as he breaks into the box. A crucial tackle to get right there. Yeah, I do apologise, obviously, with with all this stuff going on. It is rather difficult uh, to reassert it, but it seems like we're having a few stream issues also on the back end of that. And um, I, I don't I don't know if we're actually going to be able to have the, uh, the in-game overlay for this game. And the Twitch channel has actually gone offline. Fantastic. What else could possibly go wrong during this game? But hopefully we can come back to you and get that fixed at some point because it is Marquette versus Xavier. And uh, yeah, it wouldn't be an EGFC stream without a few technical difficulties. Oh dear. But either way, hopefully we can bring that one back to you guys uh, as yes. soon as possible. And, uh, I mean, yeah, as, as you said, there were, there were some latency issues. We saw them straight away. Um, can't speak on behalf of the uh, the people who were there, but you know, whether it be an internet provider issue or you know some local weather variant, could be the could be the problem. But it does lead to us having to take a bit of a pause in the action for now. Um, and yeah, gives us an an opportunity yet again to do to discuss. Well, frankly, whatever we want. Exactly, whatever we want, and that is the thing. And I think while we uh, we are on this subject of Bayern Munich, I think we do need to talk about some of their younger talent because obviously they have it in abundance, don't they? Let's they, be honest. They absolutely do. In fact, both the uh, the top couple of teams over in Germany at the minute, between uh, between Borussia Dortmund and Bayern Munich, they have some absolutely outstanding players for the future to look at here in this Munich team. There's a there's a few that certainly catch the eye, and uh, one of them actually for me is a uh, something of a surprise obviously having come over from Arsenal Serge Nabry yeah he is well he's been fantastic obviously went to Werder Bremen then transferred over to Bayern Munich and well he's now one of their starting players he's absolutely fantastic and the thing is they've got really good backup in that as well they've got um, they've got Komen and they've got Sané too so they've just got it all for wingers and they're all relatively young so they've still got a lot of career ahead of them and it, it kind of it, in a way Serge Gnabry does kind of remind me uh, well all their wingers they're just giving me you know the the Robin and Ribery kind of oh. thought you know they're, they're young they're yeah. coming in they've got a long time to play in their career are they going to be potentially the future of Bayern Munich and going back to that sort of that Robin Ribery era almost, it was one of the first times that we started to see Jagan Preston coming in. It was just a, it was the entire team working hard all the way across the pitch. And it's something that's it's become more and more dominant in European football ever since those uh, those glory days. And yeah, I think you're absolutely right. They, they certainly do have some similarities as a, uh, are we seeing a restart of this game? Uh, we are seeing a restart, yes. Um, we're, it's obvious that we're having a few problems with this match. Um, there is extreme ping um, delay for both <laughs> players. Is, yeah. I'm, I'm just seeing some of that. That's um, that's pretty rough. Yeah, that is very rough. Um, and we, we'll see if we can get that sorted. Um, obviously, once players get into game, hopefully we can bring it to you. But right now, there is obviously, as you guys know and saw, there is a large uh, latency delay for these players. Obviously, America's a lot bigger than UK, right? So, oh, play, really? Is it? So, <laughs> so if I was playing against you, it would be like, you know, we'd both be like, oh, yeah, we've got really good connection. Even though you're kind of like, you're a long way away from me in terms of England's size. But then in America, if you was on the other side of America, I'd be like, our, our ping would be completely, completely terrible. I mean, it says it all that we like we have one time zone and we're only in a tiny fraction of that one time zone. And I think there are six or something like that across the uh, from west to east coast of the United States. So yeah, it's, uh, it's certainly a little bit trickier to deal with there to, uh, to get yourselves a good, solid connection. I do believe it's just going to be remade with exactly the same teams that we saw last time around. It will be indeed, and it's going to be France, Bayern Munich, and it's going to be swapped around this time, so it will be Xavier playing as Bayern still, and it will be Marquette playing as France, it will just be on the other side of things, and uh, they're just sorting out their players and stuff, and then they will get into game, but we are going to quickly head to a quick break so I can sort everything out, and then we'll bring you straight back into the game's action.
Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back into today's final game here for EGFC Season 2. It's Marquette versus Xavier and we are straight away on the attack. I'm sorry we've brought you right into the game. We have had a few little technical difficulties but it will be Marquette playing as, uh, will be playing as France and it will be Xavier University playing as um, Bayern Munich. But here is an attack for Kylian Mbappe early on in the game and he's absolutely rifled it into the back of the net. Marquette will be taking the 1-0 lead 6 minute into the game. An Mbappe goal on FIFA 21. I've never seen such a thing. Absolutely, uh, absolute scenes. Yet again, it is going to be either France or PSG that dominate the early part of possession. And it is going to be by Munich now to fight their way back into this game. It was always going to be a big ass for Xavier, uh, for Xavier University. And it's going to get even harder now. It will. It will get even harder for them. It's going to be a very difficult game for them. But we shall see how they get on. Obviously, market very uh, Kratify. Obviously, a very decent player at the game. We've seen him play. There was a big upset between them and William and Mary uh, last week. And uh, we'll see if that can happen again. But obviously, Xavier, 1-0 down currently. Kingsley Coman coming forward. Gives it to Muller, potentially one of the players of the year. He was one of the, the, the candidates, but didn't get into the team. Gives it to Goretzka, one of the players for the future. One of those many Bayern Munich players for the future. Leon Goretzka has an amazing right foot on him when it comes to long passes, but Thomas Müller wasn't able to use his right foot efficiently and find the back of the net. Mbappe tried to use his left slightly better, but the sliding tackle is enough to prevent a second Marquette goal. Whipped into the area, cleared away by Manuel Neuer. Yeah. Good little bit of uh, good handwork from the German. And uh, still on the attack, though, France. Obviously, Kings of Coman playing on both sides of the teams today. And Mbappe, how has he found oh. the back of the net there? How has he found the back of the net? He's absolutely drilled it, and it's gone through every player's legs in that Bayern Munich defence. It's 2-0, and it's Mbappe again. What, what do you think about the teams that opt into not being PSG or France? Is it is it slightly stubborn-mindedness? Because you've got the opportunity to play any team you want. It's not like you have to own these teams. Everyone gets every team. Is, hmm. it, is, is it questionable in your mind that we don't see just PSG versus France more often? No, I think it's uh, I, I think it's one of the ones where you look at it in, 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 in League of Legends terms. You know, you see a player pick uh, an off-meta pick. It's because they think it's strong personally and they have a personal, you know, they, they think it brings something different to the game. It. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Whereas the likes of Bayern Munich, I still think they're very, uh, they're very competitive in terms of playing against France. I would... I, if I was asked France or Bayern Munich, which one do you want to play? I would obviously say France, but I would also be like, but I can play Bayern Munich if you want me to play Bayern Munich. They're a good team. They have a very good defence, have a very good attack, but they do not have Mbappe, who is through on goal once again. Can he find the finish? He goes to the lofted chip and he's put it in the back Beautiful. of the net and it's a hat trick. 24 minutes into the game, Marquette have a 3-0 lead already. What an outstanding start from Marquette, from Kylian Mbappe yet again. Feels like we say that all the time, and I stick by my point. I think that if this were a real-life football match between uh, Bayern Munich and France, I think I'd favour Bayern Munich. You've got the team with full synergy, trained together each day rather than just occasionally. However, of course, the synergies do not work like that in FIFA, as Mbappe yet again gets onto the end of a pass from his countryman, finds himself a fourth goal in 28 minutes, averaging a goal every seven minutes in this matchup. Uh, <laughs> what do you say to that then George um, <laughs> I'm not too sure honestly I think you'll have to give me a minute Grease been taking the shot fluffs it a little bit <laughs> Neuer will save but 4-0 30 minutes into the game oh my word obviously Marquette lost last week to William and Mary it was something like what was it it was very close it was 4-3 on aggregate very very close indeed but I will say they are coming out here for vengeance to prove the point of they are one of the best teams around and 4-0 very 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 early on into this game Xavier oof I would be fuming yeah they're uh, they're not having the, the nicest times in this first half but they are looking to try and make a bit of a counterplay work you can see on the top middle of your screen that there are still severe latency and ping issues for some of these players uh, Xavier maybe are just uh, struggling a little bit with the timings always hard to do when you're almost having to second guess things a second or so in advance mm -hmm. uh, Marquette making uh, full use however of every single advantage they can and why shouldn't they Griezmann looking to try and add his name to the score sheet successful in doing so it's 5-0 well in FIFA you tend to have the uh, the 3-0 quit rule 
Um, and in pro competitions, you tend to never quit. But honestly, if I was 5-0 down in the 37th minute, I'd just be like, Nah, I'd put my controller down. I'd, I'd be, I'd be done. I'd just, I'd be, I'd be finished, well and truly. But in the terms of, uh, you know, competition and sportsmanship, hopefully Xavier do stay and and do complete the game. Shot blocked from Mbappe, goes out wide for Komen. Can he get it in the middle? Uh, 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 okay, yeah. six yes. nil. Yes, yes. yes. Can. yeah. yeah. And, yes. And, and, and honestly, I think our, our biggest signal for exactly how tough this is for, for Xavier, especially with the latency, came in that goal. We barely saw any of that goal because we're seeing things from their perspective. And so, actually, yeah, this is this is very tough for them to deal with. And fair play to Marquette, who are just taking the ball by the horns. They find themselves a 7-0 lead. And I'll tell you what, I, I, I have a, 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 um, a friend of mine whose son has uh, started watching these streams every now and then then george don't know if he's out there right now but i know for a fact that this is the sort of territory where his parents would need to be buying him a new controller right now oh yeah i'm sure i'm sure and i would have been like that when i was younger as well i mean uh, until Just you know when you were younger george. until two or three uh, potential i'd say two years ago i was still smashing <laughs> controllers up i was still throwing my controller across the room my dad would come in and he'd be like what's going on be like i'm losing a game i don't care shut up i'm back <laughs> eight eight nil and it's another goal <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that was, oh dear that wasn't quite the how you doing son meme was it that was um no. yeah yeah how you doing son <laughs> smashes well, well, my get out in roughly eight million pieces and i'm swearing at my parents so not great i'm guessing yeah um that, yeah that's um that's dominance let's be perfectly honest uh whether it's the gap between france and Bayern Munich, whether it's the gap between marquette and Xavier, whether it's the gap between the internet qualities I'm not here to say that, but that was an impressive showing. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I'd say that's fair to say. Um, I don't know what level of play uh, Kratify is playing at, um, but it, it's difficult to say because when you're winning eight or nine nil, I would, I would definitely put this in terms of a player that doesn't play the game versus a player that you know is at a high level of fifa it's it's difficult because eight nil is such a ridiculous scoreline i would not expect uh, a gold three player to lose eight or nine nil to a top 100 player and Mbappe somehow misses that but this is absolutely insane oh well, yeah a rare, a rare moment of inaccuracy coming through from the marquette uh, team there as they find their striker once again in the opposition area chance here for xavier to break let's see if they can make a little bit of a play but nice quick dispossession from around and that's no longer an option and instead it's going to be mbappe once again running at the back line does get slightly caught finds the advantage will find the free kick yeah it's it's just difficult um because you know i, I play people all the time that you know, uh, a very uh, a high level of the game, you know, and then I, I wouldn't even lose by this amount. But I'm not, you know, saying that I'm a pro player by any standards, but this is what I would see in terms of, you know, a, a world class player playing against somebody that hardly picks up the controller. I do not know what Kratify's level of skill is. This is this is just ridiculous. Yeah, and be a huge, a huge amount internet based. I mean, I, I, I can't, I can't say it enough. If you're dealing with a one to two second lag, where you know we're not talking milliseconds, we're talking properly one player's passed, and then actually you're seeing a pass from you know three seconds before. Um, you, you can't deal with that. You can't play in that those conditions. So maybe that's the sort of thing that's that's happening right now for the Xavier man. But both of these, both of these players should be dealing with the same, that that same that same thing because it's peer to peer. So they should both be mm. struggling with the connection if that were the terms. If it was server-based, then it would be one or the other, but it is peer-to-peer -peer on FIFA right. still. Ball whipped into the area, should be an easy save. But fortunately, uh, and no matter how bad your connection is, the AI will still control your goalkeeper for you. <laughs> Meanwhile, this is an opportunity to test the Marquette goalkeeper. We saw the one claim coming through from, uh, I believe it's Loris, however, not tested on the second one instead. Just has to test his kicking out, and it's actually going to lead the, the Bayern team to put France in a little bit of trouble. Yet again, they deal with it smoothly, however, as we enter the last half hour of this first leg. Yeah, obviously, uh, this, is, this is a bit of a mugging, I'll be honest. <laughs> and it's just, it's just outright... Um, you know, it, ruthless. It's ruthlessness. They're not giving up, uh, Marquette, Gratify. Let's just keep going and keep going. Um, Baby Bolt's obviously already probably come to terms with the fact that this game is not going to be uh, a W. It's looking like an L, but 
uh, Marquette just keep going and keep pushing and keep attacking, keep scoring goals. It's 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 demoralising at this point. Come back the uh, the production curtain a bit. Uh, some of our viewers that uh, you probably tweaked to the fact that we're broadcasting from the UK. It's actually just coming up towards midnight over here. Uh, as again, Marquette push forward trying to find their tenth goal of the game. Um, so you know, is, is this is this the end of the night after the stream for you, or have you still got plans? Um, I'll probably I'll probably go go over and play some some games of League of Legends or something like that. And oh. the stream has gone offline once again so uh not too sure what remake, there. remake remake quick get it round it's like the excel fanatic game in the lec all over again oh, <laughs> but either way um obviously marquette currently winning nine nil um i'm gonna quickly throw it to a quick break and we'll be right back to see if we can get the stream back up and live uh, so don't go anywhere guys go grab yourself a drink and we'll be right back
Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to EGFC Season 2. This is going to be the second game in this series between Marquette and Xavier University. Unfortunately, lots and lots on lots of connection and stream issues on the player's end. Um, so the first leg had to end as a, uh, uh, well, as a, not a disqualification, but as a, uh, you know, it, uh, uh, it's a win for uh, Marquette because obviously they were winning by such a large amount and uh, obviously the, the issues that were going down. So we're going into this leg and obviously if it happens again, we'll obviously have to call it, but we're going to try the best we can. Well, we are seeing two uh, two teams that I've not had the opportunity to uh, to cast on stream in terms of the uh, the clubs that have been picked. We've seen Pierre Montcalcioni, better known as Juventus, going up against Everton, which is a, a surprising one for me. Ronaldo going to look for the free kick, going to force the save early on. I think that's one of the first chances Xavier have had um, in the series so far. And oh, okay. Okay, then. Well, Xavier have got themselves a goal back through Cristiano Ronaldo at that near post. And that is going to be... What nine um, one? On just, 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 just to check. I, I think that that was Marquette that scored. Oh, was it? No, no, it was. It was. Uh, it was Xavier. I thought. I thought Crossfire was Xavier's. No, Crossfire is from uh, Marquette. That was. Uh, oh, that was Xavier. In which case, fantastic news for Xavier. Maybe this is the beginning of a massive comeback, and um, this could be the story to end all stories. But Marquette trying to make sure that is not the case coming forward. Luca Dean, we saw him earlier on for France. Now in his at home team colours, it's going to be Dominic Calvert Lewin, edge of the box, finding James Rodriguez. Calvert Lewin, not quite able to bury it on the first effort, but the second time he makes no mistake. I will just say, Marquette University are the, the people with the, 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 the internet lag. Um, the, the ones that are struggling right now um, with obviously the delay and stuff and somehow they're still winning by nine goals it, I, I, don't, I don't quite know what's going on but here comes Paolo Dabella good defensive play from Mina as well obviously Everton's an interesting one we have seen uh, Juventus be played in uh, in EGFC a few times once this season I think this split um, but we haven't seen Everton yet which is quite interesting to see certain licensing issues of course so uh fifa not allowed to use the j word but uh we are going to see the g word as a goal comes in it's going to be Alan for everton <laughs> well there you go xavier have got themselves another go oh sorry marquette university have got themselves <laughs> another goal and it's going to be baffled. yeah exactly officially baffled rattled but um yeah obviously the licensing issues juventus belong to uh belong to pez at the moment i yeah. think it is um, yeah, they can't even appear in Football Manager. I think they're replaced by Zebre or something like that in, in Football Manager. It's, it's a bit of a an unfortunate situation, but I think we're going to get more and more situations like that. Even some of the players now coming out and saying, we're not giving you permission to use our identities. We didn't sign any of these contracts. James Rodriguez, World Cup golden boot scorer of previous years, puts a nice effort in, is going to be the corner taken quickly by Everton Marquette, looking for their third goal of this game after conceding early on in the first half. Well, unfortunately, I think it's something to do with the uh, the contracts that the clubs signed to uh, mm -hmm. the league and That's the right. leagues signed to um, to FIFA in order to use the player faces and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. not really too much they can do um, apart from that. And there is a chance that will be, be a penalty, actually. Uh, it is going to be a yellow card coming in. I believe that was Yeri Mina giving that one away. He's going to lead to that big old open stance for Ronaldo as he looks to bury one Oof. home and does so with style and panache. With a panache indeed. And there you go, equalising up at 2-2. Obviously, uh, the first game firmly won by Marquette, but we're going to take this, um, this leg as a fresh standpoint. Currently 2-2. Uh, the first game was won by 9-0 safely by Marquette mm. but um, obviously this game currently 2-2 very difficult obviously for both teams but here we go Bernard running it down the wing gives it to Calvert-Lewin has to go back to the core Ray, and try and break down this defence a bit further could have potentially gave it to Richarlison back out wide for Allen and they're really breaking this down this defence down very well it's Bernard is he going to take it first time cuts back inside goes for it on the right foot good block from the centre back I think that was Quadrado not the centre back actually Still to all in this second leg, a much closer affair between Xavier and Marquette. Really, both of them performing uh, slightly differently in this game, especially Xavier, who are actually very much the ones with their foot on the accelerator pedal, trying to take the lead in this uh, this leg of the tie. Instead, it's going to be the counter-attack. Hannes Rodriguez finding my... Um, 
He's he's sort of my uh, my bogeyman when it comes to fantasy football. Every time I have him in, he gets injured or doesn't score. Every yeah. time I take him out, he's incredible. Dominic Calvert Lewin, I hate you, but in the <laughs> nicest way possible. <laughs> I think James Rodriguez is a very special player. It's unfortunately oh, so he hasn't had the greatest of years with Madrid, and he did pretty decently at, at, at Munich, Bayern, but didn't yeah. really break out there. But at Everton, he's he's been given the chance to shine, and I think he is doing really well for them. He certainly is something special. I'm sure you'll be uh, saddened he's on the wrong side of the River Mersey this uh, this season. You know, uh, Alan. I don't really mind. I don't really mind. I th I'm not one of these people that are like, oh, I, I hate, hate, hate Everton. I'm just a football fan. I think more than anything. <laughs> I think that's the important part. I am a football fan and I like it. Even if they play for Everton, even if they play for United, I'm happy to admit when a player is good. I'm happy to admit mm -hmm. when a team's playing well. And I think that he is doing really good things. And I think Everton are building something very special um, over at uh, at their end of Merseyside. But either way, coming straight down, this the attack is Richarlison. Looks for the pass to Calvert-Lewin, but he might as well have passed it to himself as that was uh, not a very good pass by the Brazilian man. Strange one. It was almost like a failed bridge without a player in the way. I'm not entirely sure what happened there. It's going to lead to the opportunity for Xavier to counter-attack. However, the ball's played behind for the midfield. And now Dybala and Ronaldo trying to have a little bit of interplay. The ball breaks three, and it is going to be Yerimina on a yellow card, but able to make a secure tackle this time round as Ronaldo tried to find the finish. Indeed, they are. And 2-2 two, two coming up to half-time. Very, very interesting. It's good to see, though as uh, much more competitive than the previous game, obviously um, providing the teams are mm. a golfing class, so won't lie, but um, obviously Piemont Calcio, Juventus, they are not the <laughs> only team in the uh, in the Serie A that have been, um, have been taken out of the game and put into a different game. Roma, um, are not in FIFA 21. Oh, really? it, they are called they're called Roma FC. Um, it is Roma, <laughs> but it's not uh, it's not Roma Roma. You know they've got it's the name. Roma, but not as we know it. I'm pretty sure it's called Rome, not Roma. I, I'm not sure, but I think the stream Original. might have gone down once again. No, no, it has oh, been no. saved. It has been saved. Thank goodness for that. It's just a little <laughs> bit of buffering. Um, but yeah, a few changes, um, a switch around at the back, and that's one thing yeah. I think Everton need to improve on a little bit is their defence. Obviously, they looked so good at the start of this Premier League season. Um, they were at top of the table at one point, and their fans were saying, this is the year we're going to win the league, finally. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> obviously, it didn't last too long. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think it was six games in or something like that. But um, but either way, you know, it was, it, it was a good start to the season for them, and I think... I think they're going to probably try and fight for top four. It's going to be difficult because they've dropped quite a lot of points recently. I think realistically, it's going to be a uh, top six game. I think it's going to be Europa League that's got to be the aim at this point. Uh, meanwhile, in this game, they're looking to try and refine the lead. Dominic Calvert Loon breaks through, and despite the attempted save, it is going to be enough to see a 3 2 lead to the English club. There it is. Very, very nice. A um, little bit of play, unfortunately. Um, Chesney could not get enough of a touch on it to keep it out of the net and uh, we will see the 3-2 lead coming out for Marquette how, University how on earth is Wojnarek Chesney the Juventus goalkeeper It's that, that baffles me if I'm honest what is that? Um, that baffles me even more that's going to be a terrible terrible Alisson S mistake 4-2 to Everton I can't believe you just said Alisson esque mistake. I, I, a lot of people are forgetting he is still he was well he he was one of the best keepers in the world. He might be having a bad season, but he was still one of the best keepers in the world. I think people. I think he still is. I think he still is as well. But he's just having a few a few hard games, a few mistakes. Obviously, the dressing room is probably a difficult difficult place at the moment, but. Um, obviously, like you say, here is a chance for Arthur running through on goal. The strike, great save from the Everton keeper, Jordan Pickford. And lead to a corner. Opportunity to score another goal from a corner here for Juve. They're going to head over on this one. There's uh, Giorgio Cinellini not able to direct that ball downwards. Now, I, I'll be perfectly honest. It was said completely tongue-in-cheek. I believe Alisson to be <laughs> top three goalkeepers in the world at the, at the very least, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. But... Um, at the end of the day, people people judge you on your, your most recent games, and the last two have not been good ones for uh, the Liverpool number one. Uh, that being said, I thought it was very, very unfortunate. I think it's that lack of communication with the new centre-back that, uh, that caused that, uh, that absolute howler on the last weekend. Oh, yeah, for sure. And One thing I do want to come back to, I want to pick your brain on why you find it surprising that Chesney is Juventus' goalkeeper. 
I mean, I don't think he was up to standard when he was at Arsenal, which are a team that I generally consider to be worse than Juventus. So to see him at He's one of the top teams lot. in Italy... Do you think so? Yeah, I, I mean, think 100%. I, I mean, just watching, uh, obviously, he, he he moved. I think he moved around quite a bit since uh, he left He left Arsenal. It's a chance, though. Can't quite put it in the back of the net. In the back of the net. And it's not. I think it was Kuleskevsky. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Um, I think he's Ukrainian. Oh, man, I, I really wanted that to lead to a goal. That was a lovely passing manoeuvre as we talked about goalkeepers. It was... Um, Look at yeah, how uh, under a bit of pressure now as Alan breaks through lovely sliding tackle comes in eyes enough time for Alexandro to find Arthur but yet again Richarlison passing the ball inside the two um, South Americans linking up with Jean beautifully Rodriguez showing his class as he tucks the ball inside the net after tucking inside the net well there it is it's Rodriguez that man we spoke about the man we love to hate and we hate to love um scoring another goal and well, it's it's been uh, very well played from from Marquette. Obviously, aside from the the connection issues, um, Xavier obviously struggling quite heavily. But um, you know that's something that they've had all season. They've been struggling to to get any any firm standing in the league. And another shot coming out from Bernard, quite saved by Chesney. And now they look to build out from the back and potentially get themselves an attack. Uh, I mean. You've a team, so going back to your earlier question, that I always think of, I, I think of them as a roughly top 10 teams in Europe, generally mm -hmm. speaking, and I don't consider Chesney to be a top 10 goalkeepers in the world, and that's why it surprises me, to be perfectly honest, but you know what, he's, he's certainly having a fairly decent showing in this game, having uh, done much better in this second half. I don't want to say who is your top 10 keepers in the world, because that's obviously a very <laughs> difficult <laughs> question, but... Uh, I mean, I'll give you top three nice and oh, well, top two for sure. Nora and Allison right yeah. now. Um, I can say that without hesitation. Really, <laughs> Noya and I, I would uh, this very moment I would say Noya and Stegen. Uh, I I would put Toya Stegen in my top ten. Not sure he'd make my top five. Um, I know he's had a couple of shaky moments, but I think, still think David De Gea is top five. Um, but right now we've got to talk. <laughs> about uh, the Everton keeper. I think it's Jordan Pickford having to make a save and doing so. I don't know about that. De Gea has still been top 10. I think I, so ever since Spain lost the World Cup, uh, well, he had a poor World Cup with Spain. I can't remember how long ago that was now. That was like, what, four years ago? Three, four years ago now? Um, no, I think, uh, yeah, maybe coming up to three years, I think. Yeah. So two it, and a half years. Yeah. Oh my, the, he had, he had a, a bad time. And ever since then, he has been awful. <laughs> You see, again, I, I, I personally I disagree with that, and I think it comes back to what we were saying about Allison. He's had two bad games in much the same way that David De Gea had probably three bad games at that World Cup, and at the moment people will be thinking of Allison from his current mistakes. And David De Gea, I think, actually, mostly pretty steady. I don't rate the back four in front of him, and man, you still keep a decent number of clean sheets. So, yeah, I still uh, think I, he makes I, a lot of mistakes. I think that's the, the issue I have with him. Whenever I watch a Man United game, which isn't very often, I always seem to see him making, you know, a, a quite a lot of mistakes. The thing I don't like about the hair is that he keeps Henderson out of the team. I wish Henderson had gone back on loan to someone like a Sheffield United because um, he was absolutely phenomenal them last season, was developing so well as a player, yeah. and he's basically been a cup keeper this year, which um, yeah. is, is is less than I believe he deserves. Um, I agree. In terms of Premier League keepers right now, you can't look past Emmy Martinez. I mean, you've got to say Arsenal kept the wrong keeper there, I think. I agree. 100% I agree. Obviously, it's a lot of pressure on Arsenal because um, they bought Leno. Ooh. They bought Leno for a fair amount of money, I'm pretty yeah. sure. Um, something like 20 million, I think it was. Um, so, you know, it, it, they're in a lot of pressure to keep him. But I personally think they, yeah, I agree. I think they've kept the wrong goalkeeper. Uh but I think that's where you can have respect for... I mean, personally, I don't have respect for a lot of the transfer dealings that Chelsea do, but they've spent, I think, a world record amount on a keeper in Arud Balaga, who was, frankly, absolutely garbage at times. <laughs> um, and they went, OK, it's not working. Mendy, in you come. And even Mendy, I don't think, is going to be their, um, their final solution to that one. So at least they sort of looked and went, yep, yeah, messed up on that one, as big as the transfer was. And they sort of... There, they've, they've corrected that one, and I think that the same probably need doing for Arsenal, but didn't. But you know what? Mikel Arteta knows a hell of a lot more about football than I do, so let's give him, uh, let's give him credit that he knows what he's doing. Yeah, same for me, same for me. But there is the end of the game. Fantastic result 
for Marquette University. They've done really, really well in there. I think that's 14-2 on uh, so. overall now as we head back in here and we're going to look to wrap things up today. But a 14-2 result for Xavier against Marquette did really well. We'll quickly go over the scores once more from today's games. So we had William & Mary versus St. John's University. St. John's University picking up the win 8-4 and we had Fairfield versus Niagara. Fairfield picking up the win. I think it was 10-1 or 11-1 um in the end and then obviously marquette versus xavier marquette picking up a a tidy 14-2 victory it's kind of crazy <laughs> to say um but in total what a fantastic week it has been obviously aside from the last game having a few uh, minor connection issues what a fantastic game as always stan thank you very much for joining me mr greyheart you can follow him at greyheart99 on twitter you can also follow me at george overton underscore on twitter as well and as always, guys, hopefully have a lovely rest of your week. Big, <laughs> big thank you to EGFC, obviously, for putting this tournament on EGF. Um, hopefully you all have a lovely rest of your evening. And remember, come back for next week's Monday action. I think we have Super Smash Brothers on tomorrow. Um, so make sure to come back for that. But other than that, ladies and gentlemen, have a lovely rest of your evening. Have a lovely rest of your week. And we'll catch you next week for some more FIFA action.